Masks have become a very creative and versatile part of Pictures to Exe, and it is one of those areas where we can allow our creativity free reign. We can add masks as mask templates, they're provided automatically within Pictures to Exe. We can create masks ourselves if we're familiar with our image editor, and here's a number of different creations that I've made over the last few weeks. But in addition to that, we can also even use our video as a mask, or an image even. Let's take a look at the basics of masks here. I've got a piece of video. It's 1920,080 HD video. You can see by looking down just below the objects and animation button, it's about 9 seconds in length. And I've already converted it, optimised the video, just to save a bit of time. So I'm going to drag that down into the slide list. Now with the video selected, let's go to the Objects and Animations screen and immediately select a mask. The mask option that I want is the mask templates that come with Pictures to Exe. There's two of them, but they're infinitely variable, so in fact more than two. But they're based on a rectangle and a circle. The circle, for example, we can adjust the circle to be an oval shape, but I prefer to drag out the toggles on the box that appears when we create the mask. So I've reset it back to where we started and of course we get the opportunity to make the edges softer and with the square shape we can make the corner radius either solid, sharp or soft, round. Let's click OK and you can see exactly which part of the video is being masked. Now there's two parts of the mask, well I suppose three really. We have the mask container, we can use that to animate the mask if we wish. We have the mask stencil and within that we've got the circle but of course we could have created a mask ourselves, or even used a video or an image as a mask. But within the area you can see here that's transparent we can use the mask content, right click and add an image or even another video. Now I'm going to add an image, let me just move to the folder I'm working on, let's add the peacock here. Now because the peacock has been composed over on the left side of the image, it's not nicely lined up with that central mask. So if we select the mask circle, there we see the bounding box. Now we get the opportunity here to go to the animation screen and we do get the opportunity to unlink the chain link just here, which enables us to adjust this using click and drag. But to be honest, let's reset that back to 100 and I'm going to reset the chain link I find it much more convenient to just hold the shift key and just drag out the mask to reveal the parts of the image that I want. So if I want to move my mask a little bit one way or even eke it out downwards I can do so, a little bit upwards too if I want. Now if I get to the point where I want to adjust the mask I can do that. If I go back to the properties here and the picture option and click I go straight back into the Add Mask dialog. So if I wanted to increase the blur or reduce it, I can do so. If I really wanted to, I could even swap the mask circle for the mask rectangle. But there we have a pretty simple mask. Let's press play and we can see just how this works within the moving water. Now I suppose the creativity and the versatility I was talking about is that we can animate the mask, we can animate the mask container, we can animate the image too. So we've got lots of opportunities without even considering any changes to the background water. Let's do that first of all. I'm going to go to my 
animation tab and I'm going to choose to have the water go just a little bit soft and it just makes that peacock shine out of that water I don't like that slight little what looks like a drop shadow around the edge so whenever I add a bit of blur I normally just drag the video a little bigger it's not going to hurt doing that especially while we're blurring the background and what I'm going to do as well is just come out of the objects and animation screen because I could always add another copy of the video just before this and of course it would be logical if we were moving into making a real slideshow is that the full peacock may be our choice to come up after the video has run its course let's give this a little bit more of a gentler fade on screen and we'll just select the first video we'll press play and just sit back and watch what we have hope you'll agree it works pretty well what we can do here is to actually zoom the content the picture that I put within the mask but if we do choose to follow this image with this one then the zoom has to be out if we're going to choose a zoom because it has to end before this one fades on screen or they're not going to match let me demonstrate what I mean by going back into the image containing the mask make sure you identify the image itself within the mask the mask content and I'll put my cursor up here somewhere let's say yeah I think right up here and I'm going to hit alt insert to clone the keyframe so between this point and this point I want to zoom out so the first keyframe I need to have my peacock larger I'm going to click and drag I think I'd also like to put some speed in here now because we're starting the animation while this image is fading on screen but we're going to see the peacock come to a stop here then I'd like to have the speed slowing down so go into the zoom options add a modifier animation speed and slow down now let's come out of this window click the video to start with and we'll press play and have a look at that slight variation where the mask content has also been zoomed comes to a gentle stop just as the rest of the peacock is filled in by that gentle four second fade from the mask to the static image now let's change things a little bit here I've dragged the still image down into the slide list the still image is a little larger than I require it it's been cropped to 25 60 14 40 that is still 16 9 aspect ratio but it gives me scope to either zoom the image in or out or pan it left right or up and down what we're going to do here is use the video as the mask and also the mask content so let's open this up into the objects and animation screen and select our mask this time I'm going to add this option add mask image stroke video and I can select the video because we've already converted it I'm going to blur this a little bit about 10 and in the mask content instead of putting something different and that's where the experimentation and the versatility comes in because we can do that and see what sort of effects we can create but here I'm going to right click the mask content and add the video once again same video and maybe a little bit of blur keep it about the same as before and that looks pretty good let's see how it looks when we view it in the mini player now this is going to look maybe a little more pleasing to the eye if we drag down 
that image. So we go from the one that's masked onto the still image. And you'll notice we've got a slide duration here of seven seconds. But when we selected the video, it actually showed us we had nine. The reason pictures to exit has picked up seven was because we started the process by dragging down the still image, not the video. So we do have the scope here to increase that slide duration to nine. So let's take a look at that by putting the cursor back to the title and we'll just watch that through. I like the way that the lily is sort of partially hidden and the water is over the top of it like a true montage. Works particularly well and then the gentle fade onto the still image also I think works well too. Now we do have the opportunity to be able to animate the flower. So let's go back into the objects and animation screen. If I select the flower, which I've done here, and I move my pan left or right, or up and down, come to that, you can see that we reveal parts of the edge which is not going to be visually attractive to the eye. The problem we have here is that when I dragged this image down and applied the mask, the image was selected. So the mask, if I close that up for a moment, is now a child of the parent. I can separate these two even now. All I need to do is to select the mask, right click, choose cut, click into this area or the gray area to lose any bounding boxes, right click and paste. It doesn't affect the image visually, but it separates the two. But if I wanted to animate this, and let's say I wanted to put a keyframe there, I'll use Alt Insert to clone it. The keyframe has to be before the fade out, because I'm probably going to be zooming this. So if we had this keyframe here, for example, or even here, then the flower is still zooming while the next flower is fading on screen and then they're going to be different sizes it just looks odd to the eye so we need this keyframe either there or maybe a little bit short of the fade of the next image but I still have a problem with a pan because if I go back to the start and I try to put a pan in place quite often we're going to see a straight line down here. So we're more or less limited here. We're limited to a zoom. And I quite like to zoom out. So what I'm going to do here is just drag this up a little bit and allow it to zoom down. But of course, I am going to need to apply some speed. I think I'll use the smooth option and we'll just take a quick look at that. And of course, we could experiment with zooming the video too. And it all looks pretty good. Now let's change things very slightly here. Let me drag this image down. And I'll have another copy of that, I think, because we'll be working on this one. And we're going to put the kangaroos, the ones we converted for one of the previous videos. But what I can use here perhaps is a different type of mask. So I'm going to select this image and open it up in the objects and animation screen. I'm going to click into the gray area, go and get my mask. This time I'm just going to add a blank mask because I get the opportunity to select anything I want. So in the mask stencil, right click and add an image. And I'm going to go to that's the wrong place, it's the right mask but the wrong place. Let me go to masks and video, masks. What I was going to say was we can create our own masks and here I've got one which is sort of like a bit of a smudge. Let's open that up. You can see the shape of the mask there. And the mask content I'm going to use is the kangaroo video. So right click, add the video. The one I'm looking for is this one. Pretty simple to do, although we're getting the background noise of the video. 
So one of the things we need to remember is to mute it. With the last video, I think I muted it in Photoshop, so it doesn't actually have any sound. Let me run that once again. Get a bit distracted when you suddenly hear noise. And that works particularly well with the greenery of the kangaroos and also the surrounding greenery of the leaves. But we won't see it in its entirety until we see the two together. Remember, the kangaroos was a long video, 19 seconds in length. And again, we've only got 7 seconds here because we dragged down an image first. So we've got lots of scope here. In fact, we've probably got more than we need. So let me put something like 12 in there just for demo purposes. And we'll just take a look at this in the mini player where I think we get a better feel for how the whole thing is going to look. This particular video needs the section included where they all stand up and look at me. But you can see it works pretty well. Let me open this back up into the objects and animation screen because even though I've made a mask within my image editor, I still have the opportunity to adjust it here. First of all though, I think that background is a little bit fussy, so we can just put a bit of blur on that just to soften it nicely. And if I go back to my mask stencil and the mask that I've used, then once again I've got the opportunity to hold the shift key and match the mask to the subject. That wasn't done deliberately. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. Hold the shift, drag the top down a little bit. So if I was looking to do something along those lines, then it's pretty easy to do and we can see what we're doing while we're actually doing it, which is quite useful. And of course we get the opportunity to blur the mask as well. So if we felt the edges were a little bit too sharp, then as long as we select the mask, we've got a blur option there too. So we can have an irregular shaped mask, but we do get to adjust it on the fly. Now let's do something just a little different again. I'm going to pick up this image and go to the Objects and Animation screen, click into the grey area, and I'm going to add a mask. The mask I'm going to add is a blank mask because I want to choose the mask stencil. So in the mask stencil, right click and add an image. I want to go to one of these here, it's called Bands 1, another one that's created in my image editor. Just a series of square rings if that's the right way to describe it, oblong shapes. The black and white here is reversed here to become white and black. So let's select bands 1, but the mask content, well let's add the video. And I've done the wrong thing, add in an image. And the video that I want is my kangaroos. Now I'm just going to shut that up just for a moment because we're going to add another mask container. But there's another way we can do this. I could copy this. If I do that, highlight it, right click, copy, click down here, right click and paste. I've got two identical masks. So let me just change the name of one of them just so that I can see the difference. Should I need to, of course, probably not in this case. But within Mask 2, I need the same video, but I need a different mask. So let me change that using the Properties tab, Picture, Click, because it's Bands 2 I need here. And if I close this mask up, now I've got my kangaroos masked in two separate ways, and I can animate each of them individually. 
So let's select the first of the masks. I want this to maybe work over three or four seconds, let's say four seconds. So I'll select both of the masks, put my cursor here, I'll hit insert and insert, select both and set them up at the four second point. So now I can decide what I want to happen between this keyframe and this keyframe but I'm controlling the whole mask content or container here. Now I'll keep this pretty simple. I'm going to just zoom one of these just a little bit. Zoom that one up and we're going to zoom that one down. So one's going to come up and one's going to go down. But the one thing we've got to remember of course is I just inserted both of these keyframes. So I do need to make sure I turn the zoom on so that both of the images return to their correct size. I'm also going to need some speed. So as we're going to start this particular option within the fade on, then the speed I'm happy to choose is slow down. So I'm going to do that for the zoom for both parts or both mask containers. So slow down for one, slow down for the other. And the other thing I've forgotten to do, which I should do before I show you a little trial here, is to go to my Kangaroo Converted and to mute the audio. And I need to do the same with the other one as well. Now let's go back out to the other screen because I think we'll see this a bit better. And I'll drag something down here. Once again, I can adjust my the length of the video. Let's put 14 seconds in there and we'll just take a look at that. I'm going to stop that for a moment. I think it may even look nicer. Let me put a bit of greenery in front as well because I don't think I'd be using that sort of effect straight after a title. So we'll start with the greenery here. Just watching in the mini player to see if what we've done is going to work okay unusual if nothing else now I've got a suggestion to bring this video to a close selecting the masked image and video let's open up the objects and animation screen I'm going to make a couple of changes here I'm going to select the videos from within both of the mask containers add a thin border it only needs to be quite thin probably about four pixels is going to be enough maybe even that may be a bit high let's go down to two one of the things we have to be a little careful of when we do this sort of work is we're looking at the previews here only at 50 percent of their size so although i can't do it very effectively while recording a video it's a good idea to do full screen previews whenever you can. So one of the things I want you to do is to add the line around those two videos. The other thing was to add a controlling frame to maybe reduce the size of the image. That's why I put an image at the bottom because at the moment we hardly see that but we will in a moment or two. I'm going to click into this area to lose all of the bounding box boxes around everything and just introduce a frame. Then I'm going to select both masks, right click and cut them and paste them into the frame. So once again nothing changes with the animation but we've now got everything controlled by our frame. So in this instance if I want to bring the size down to 85% then I can do that. And you, if I just do this manually you can see where the picture is going to end up which gives me the opportunity to select the background and put any blur or opacity into that that I feel that I need. So let's take one last look at this. We'll go right back to the start this time and we'll go through and concentrate to make sure we're happy with the work we've done but this is where we really should be using a full screen preview.
and then the video fades the background is going to come up from being soft to sharp because we've got the same image next it all flows quite nicely I hope you'll agree and of course one last thought here within this set of videos we have looked at enhancing video using Photoshop's Creative Cloud but you may not be a Creative Cloud user you may not have the ability to be able to do that well we do have quite a bit of scope within pictures to Exe now both with still images and also video so if I selected my two kangaroo pictures if I felt that to be able to balance better with the image behind them and the one that comes next that I needed to add a bit of color correction I can do that by selecting both of the videos and by adding a filter on this occasion we'll just use hue and saturation because the change I'd like to make mostly is saturation so you can see I can boost the saturation in actual fact it only seems to be working on one of these so I think we would better do them one at a time so I'll boost this one to let's say 12 and then I'll select this one and we'll boost that one to 12 there we are and that can be quite nice to match the video in fact I probably was a little bit light there let's let's push it a little bit to 15 to finish the kangaroos now just seem to look nicer in the video with the background just a little bit of extra color but of course we do have lots of other scope there with contrast as well.